on, let's take a look at our next multiple choice question. So based on a random sample of 50 students, 90, the 90% confidence interval for the mean amount of money students spend on lunch at a certain high school is found to be uh, 345 to 415, which of the following statements is true. Okay, so a couple of things that I'm noticing, right? I see that we're dealing with confidence intervals again, but this time I'm in mean land because we have a numerical variable, right? The amount of money that you spend at lunch. So my variable here, if I want to write X, it's the um, money students spend at lunch. All right, and this again, this is, we've got a confidence interval problem here. So this is going to be chapter eight. Um, because I have that numerical variable, I'm in mean land, right? And so I'm going to use a T star critical value. And just FYI, our degrees of freedom are 49. And that's because we had a random sample of 50. So it looks like they actually ran the CI. They, they checked the assumptions, did it all. And they got that the, they think the parameter, they think if they had run the census at this school, they think the mean would have been somewhere around $3.45 and $4.15. And they're asking us to interpret it. So, okay, let's take a look at that, let at our options and see what we got. So A says 90% of the time, the mean amount of money that all students spend on lunch at this high school will be between $3.45 and $4.15. So I'm going to go ahead and say no on this one. The problem is that we don't know that each confidence interval that you create would be exactly $3.45 to $4.15. I mean, you can imagine if I took a different random sample of 50 students, maybe my CI might be something more like um, like 352, you know, to like 423 or something like that, right? It's not always going to be exactly this number and exactly this number. When we talk about this 90%, we mean that if we repeated this process, so I got CI after CI after CI, right? I had just had so many confidence intervals. And when I put this, I mean like low to high, whatever my low and high are, that I think the parameter is in about 90% of those intervals. So 90% of the time I have a good interval and about 10% of the time just by chance I don't. But it doesn't mean that I'll always get 345 and 415 as my upper and lower bounds. Through sampling variability, that's gonna change. All right, so 90% of all students spend between 345 and 415. No, that's not correct. What we're saying is that we're 90% confident the mean is in there. We're 90% confident that mu is between those numbers, right? So is between 345 and 415. We're not saying that all students spend that much. We think the average student spends that much, right? And Because the, there's definitely going to be students that don't spend any money on lunch because they bring their own lunch, and then there's going to be some that spend more than that, right? We're looking for the average student. So no, I would disagree with this statement. All right, 90% of all random samples of 50 students obtained at this high school would result in a sample mean, uh, a sample mean amount of money students spend on lunch. So no, again, I'm going to say that if you repeated this, that would be great. 90% of the time, our intervals would contain the parameter, but we're not always going to have this 345 and 415 thing. And and for the sample mean, we're always just going to calculate that. We don't have to guess that either each time out. We're always trying to figure out where the parameter is going to be. All right, so let's look. 90% of all random samples of 50 students obtained at this high school would result in a 90% CI that contains, there it is, the true mean amount of money, right? This is phrasing for, this means we think the parameter is in that interval. Because again, the only way to actually find the parameter is to go talk to all of the students, right? But we're not going to do that. We're just going to talk to 50 of them, which is fine. But 90% of the time we do this, we think that we're going to capture the parameter. Again, 90% of our intervals would be good in the long run and about 10% would be bad. So D, D is our answer. All right.